all you are watching simulink tutorial and today we are going to see the temporal logic implementation in state flow and why should we go for it so let's start so i have already designed this model as it is big as compared to other models we have seen in last tutorials i'll explain the logic but before that we'll see what is temporal logic so if you search temporal logic in help you will get all the documentation related to it how to use it and when to use it and its syntax and all so there are two types of temporal logics so one you can implement it using absolute time and the second one is implicit tick event so today we are going to see the absolute time temporal logic implicit tick event will see in some other tutorial the basic background of implicit tick event is it uses clock tick events and we need to specify a number of ticks that will complete the time duration we want so as of now let's concentrate on absolute time temporal logic so temporal logics we use when we need to implement timer logic so it is related to uh, timer implementation so for example in this model i want that if this signal is true for at least 5 second then output should be 1 else the output should be false so if the signal here from 4 to 15 it is 1 so 4 plus 5 9 so at 9 the output should be true as long as this input is 1 once the input becomes 0 the output should be 0 so we need a timer to calculate 5 second duration in this model so i have implemented this using simulink blocks as well as state flow so let's have a look at the simulink logic first so this entire logic what it does is it counts up to 5 for 5 seconds it checks if the signal is true or false that is input signal and based on that it sets the final output to true or false so we'll see how all these blocks are achieving what we want so this first section okay so it is for count so counter for that we have add block so it keeps adding one to the final count at each time step then this min max block so this min max block its function is main so it will pass the minimum input as its output so for values 1 to 4 over here the output of this min max block will be 1 to 4 and for values greater than or equal to 5 this min max block will provide 5 as the output so this first section is for counting purpose okay and this delay block it provides the final count value to this addition block okay so if you want to see the detail working of counter and how to implement it using basic simulink blocks you can watch the video at the link given in the description below so moving on now the second section is to determine if input has changed from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 as we want output as true only if the input is true for at least 5 seconds so here we are taking this input that is our input signal then we are taking its previous sample and its current sample and we are comparing it using relational operator block so if current and previous input if they are not equal it means signal has changed that is there was transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 in that case we want to reset the count so 0 will be the final count else in a case where 
input signal has not changed this first section count value will be the final count value okay now imagine a scenario that signal has changed from 0 to 1 in that case this will be true so count will be 0 now in next time sample the previous count 0 will be here and 1 so 1 will be here and minimum between 5 and 1 so 1 will be passed as the count as this will be 0 and so on so it will count up to 5 so once there is transition from 0 to 1 of the input signal and considering signal is true for 5 seconds after 5 seconds this signal will be 5 so 5 is greater than or equal to 5 will be true okay so this will be 1 so this is to check if the timer has reached its maximum value okay but this count can also reach to its max value in case if the signal is zero also so we need to make sure that when this timer reaches its maximum value at that time the input should also be true so it is ended with input so this final flag will provide the output so now you know that this first section is for counting purpose this second one is to determine if input has changed from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 and this last one is to check if the counts or the time value has reached its maximum value and input is 1 and based on that set the final output so now you can see how many blocks we used here to implement this simple requirement now let's see how to implement same functionality using state flow and you can see here there are just these two states that is default and state 2 so by default the output will be false if input is true then go to state 2 but the action of output equal to true will take place if input is true for 5 seconds and to guard that condition we have added this first line that is on after in bracket 5 comma sec bracket complete and colon is used the syntax of using absolute time temporal logic in a state is this that is on then after then the value of time and the unit of time whether it is in second millisecond or microseconds if we use the same condition on a transition then we just need to remove this on part we can use this part on the transition that is after in bracket 5 comma second and in this state if input is false it will go to this default state and output will be assigned value as false now if i go to configuration parameter here for this model start time is 0 and stop time is 40 and the step size is 1 so if i change the fixed step size in the configuration parameter then i'll have to change this constant value that is by what value this counter should increment so let's say if i make the fixed step size as 0.2 then i'll have to make this constant as 0.2 otherwise we'll get wrong output but for this logic we don't have to modify anything even if the fixed step size of this model changes first one is the input so first one is the input second is the simulink output and the 
last one is the straight flow output so you can see here that at 4 the input signal becomes 1 and at 9 both the output signal get updated and become 1 and when the input signal becomes 0 both the output you can see here are 0 here at 25 second input becomes again true but it is not true for 5 seconds but for 4 seconds so in that case both the outputs are 0 so it is working as per the requirement so now you know the advantage of using state flow for timer logic implementation over simulink blocks as it requires a lot of blocks plus modification if sample time changes for the model and this is very simple you don't need to modify anything even if the sample time changes so next time if you want to implement the timer logic go for state flow without any doubt using temporal logic so that's all for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and keep watching and keep learning